Hello again. It's good to be back. I'm Professor Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study. And this week, I'll be looking at how concerned we should be about the outbreak of monkeypox in the UK and talking you through what we've seen so far on the Zoe Health app and see if there's anything uh, we can do about it. We'll also be running uh, through the differences again between BA1 and BA2, just to see if there are any updates for you. And also looking at how many people uh, not infected uh, seem to be getting sick again with COVID and also about reinfections, which seem to be uh, on the up. But first, let's uh, take you through this week's data. So cases remain relatively flat for the second week in a row. The actual estimates at the moment are around 117,000 cases a day, which is about a 7% uh, decrease from last week, but very much fluctuating around the same level uh, that we've been seeing. And this, just to put it into context, is about the, uh, the level, it's above where we had in December last year when everyone was really panicking. So although cases aren't increasing, there's still a lot of COVID in the population and your chances of getting it or bumping into someone with it is about one in 39 people. Now, that means big gatherings are going to be risky, but the good news is that deaths are still coming down. And uh, last couple of weeks, been around 100 a day. And decline in hospitalizations continues, and it's below 700 a day. And that's all good news. Now, uh, in the age groups, not much to report here. Everything's looking pretty flat or slightly down, except for kids. And... Um, we know from the past, they tend to be ahead of the curve and driving a lot of infections. And so that's one reason that uh, we should be expecting a, an upturn in the next couple of weeks, if this is correct. Now, the regions uh, are all bunched together at the moment, pretty steady. The one place that's showing a definite increase is Scotland. And again, Scotland, uh, got the earliest decrease. So I think they're a bit of a bellwether for the, for the current Omicron variant, again, indicating that things uh, are expected to get a little bit worse. Um, when we look at symptoms, the current top 20 uh, hasn't changed much. We're at about 81% with runny nose and uh, followed by fatigue, headache, and sore throat. Um, and sneezing is also uh, on two thirds of all cases. Now, we are going to be updating the app uh, so you no longer have to put in your chronic symptoms every day. And uh, hopefully, it's going to make your job much easier. So, we just focus on symptoms that are changing, not your persistent ones, because many of you have been complaining uh, that you wanted that to change. So, uh, that should be uh, with you pretty soon to keep an eye out for it or uh, refresh your app. Um, if it's not loading up. And this allows us to track also at the same time uh, new outbreaks, but also um, your existing chronic conditions like back pain, pain in the knee, heartburn, etc. So talking of new outbreaks, um, the press are very big on uh, monkeypox, which isn't something that uh, I had to worry about as uh, as a doctor and it's really pretty rare. And it is doubling every week in the UK, but there's still a handful of cases. The last count was about 71 and it can affect anyone uh, younger than 55. It doesn't really affect old people for reasons I'll explain. It's in 20 countries worldwide. And for the first time it's spread out of Africa and transmitting in countries other than Africa. And this is because there's been a, a small mutation in the virus that's allowed it to uh, procreate uh, away from its, its home. And the interesting thing is that it's part of the smallpox family. So we believe that if you had a smallpox vaccination when you were a kid, then uh, you are going to be protected from it. So older generations generally won't uh, get it. 
and uh, so obviously there's no absolutes, but that's the, the current thinking. And so the UK, generally, if you were born uh, but around or before 1971, that was about the last time uh, people were routinely given smallpox uh, injections. Uh, so also to know it's not nearly as bad as smallpox uh, and much less severe. Most people get better in two to four weeks and it takes uh, about 10 days for symptoms to appear after a contact. And we've got everything in place on the app to record uh, any of these symptoms should this ever become a, a problem. And just to remind you, one of the, there is quite a lot of overlap in the general symptoms with COVID, um, headache, fever, swelling, muscle aches, back pain, fatigue, et cetera. And you might think that the, the rash is quite similar and it's quite different though. The, the uh, itchy rash you get is uh, on the face, hands and feet. And it's very pustular. And this is like, that was the whole meaning of, of pox. And it uh, has pus inside it and these, these very um, cylindrical lesions. And it's very different to the rash that you can see here that you get on your feet and toes with COVID, which was much more common with Delta and, and actually has got less common with Omicron, but still occurs in about one in 20 people. And we're keeping an eye on rashes, as you can see from the graph here, where we are track, we've been tracking this for some time uh, since uh, February last year, and no major sh changes in this that we're seeing. And currently, this is about you know, one in 20 people are getting a, a rash. It's commoner in children. That's COVID. So if you do get a rash, uh, it's far more likely to be COVID than anything uh, more sinister. Um, monkeypox, just to keep you up to date, is if uh, you catch it by close contact with an infected person or animal, often you've got to be living with them, sleeping with them for long periods of time. You can't just get it from a casual contact. Um, people have got it by being directly coughed or sneezed on by some with a rash, but that's uh, less common. And uh, you don't go up and uh, touch someone's blisters is a bit of advice. Um, we're going to add uh, any extra symptoms needed to cover this virus in the new reporting flow. Now, just to remind you of something we talked about last uh, a couple of weeks ago was the subtle differences between BA1 and BA2. And we found that BA2 variant caused a greater number, a wider number of symptoms than BA1. And there were more people getting sneezing, runny nose, brain fog, headache, ear ringing, and lost voice, and less people getting abdominal pain, headache, and funny heartbeats. But hospitalization was actually lower, which is great news. And we're not quite sure how this affects um, long COVID. So we'll hopefully get some more data on that, but good news that the, the newer variants are much less likely to uh, send you to hospital or cause problems. Although uh, you might feel you're getting more milder symptoms all across your body. Now, a lot of people are asking about reinfection rates. Um, how many people have been reinfected since Omicron? I think we're all hearing stories now of people who, uh, a lot of people who got Omicron in December, January, getting reinfected again when they thought they were immune. Uh, seems to be quite rare three months after infection, but starting to see more and more people after six months where their natural immunity might have waned or they're getting a slightly slight different new variant. And our current estimates of reinfections that we're seeing at the moment are around eight and a half percent. This is a likely underestimate, but you can see from the graph that this is uh, increasing uh, quite steadily from a month or two ago. So I, I think we're going to be seeing many more reinfections because most people by now have had some form of uh, COVID or have had antibodies to it. So um, the other sign that we're seeing is that 37% of tests carried out on people 
uh, who hadn't been previously in, uh, infected were positive in May. And so it's still much more likely uh, to uh, get COVID if you've never had it before compared to 13% uh, who previously infected. So I think this reinfection plus the small pool of people who've never had it is keeping continuing to drive Omicron and unfortunately keep it on our radars. Um, so in conclusion, um, COVID definitely not over. We're still tracking the pandemic as well as other health conditions. Do think carefully about the symptoms you're getting. Uh, the data you're giving us is fantastic, particularly on skin rashes. So don't forget these rather odd symptoms allow us to track anything new. Um, I'm not particularly worried about monkeypox. It is very rare, but it is doubling every week and uh, we just need to keep an eye on it. Um, but we have the perfect early warning device uh, between us. In a couple of weeks time, we will give you more uh, data on the menopause and also links between what you eat and uh, heartburn and bowel, irritable bowel syndrome. And we'll be sharing much more uh, data with you over the coming weeks on other health conditions. The next release is gonna be in a fortnight where we give us time to do a bit more careful analysis. In the meantime, do uh, remember to like and subscribe our channel, share the app with friends and family, keep on our website and app for updates and support science and keep logging.